Hello and welcome to the 2009 AN Annual Meeting. My name is Jay McBride. I'll be the moderator for the press briefing today. I'd like to welcome our esteemed panelists who are joining us today, as well as members of the press in attendance and also by a conference call. Today we welcome three researchers to discuss their work. After each of our guests has discussed their research, we'll have a few moments for questions. First by those in attendance here in the press room, followed by those on the conference call, time permitting. Please wait to be identified before asking your question if you're here in the gallery. Our first presenter today is Dr. Pierre Amarenko, author of the abstract titled Relative and Cumulative Effects of Lipid and Blood Pressure Control in the Stroke Prevention by Aggressive Reduction in Cholesterol Levels Trial. This abstract is embargoed until 5.15 p.m. Pacific, Wednesday, April 29th, 2009. Thank you and welcome, Dr. Amarenko. Thank you, uh, and uh, good morning, uh, everybody. So uh, in this, uh, this abstract is presented on behalf of my colleagues on the steering committee and on behalf of the uh, uh, Sparker investigators. So the background for this uh, new analysis from Sparker, which has been presented and, uh, and published in 1986, uh, 2006, uh, I'm sorry, um, this, uh, back, the background for this new analysis is that uh, uh, with the uh, new meta-analysis that we published uh, recently in the Lancet Neurology uh, of more than 165,000 individuals uh, randomized in statin trials, um, uh, we found uh, that uh, each uh, 39 milligram uh, per deciliter uh, that is one millimole reduction in LDL cholesterol is followed by a 21% relative risk reduction of stroke. So it is, there is no question now that statins uh, are really a standard uh, treatment to prevent stroke and major cardiovascular events. Even in secondary prevention uh, in the Sparker trial, uh, we found that the reduction uh, of LDL cholesterol with etovastatin 80 milligrams per day reduced the risk of stroke and uh, major cardiovascular events significantly. It is also uh, well known, be beside LDL cholesterol reduction, it is also well known that uh, lowering blood pressure decreases the risk of having another stroke. And it is known that uh, HDL cholesterol has a protective effect uh, of stroke, particularly high HDL cholesterol, that is good cholesterol. And finally, uh, there are suggestions from epidemiological studies and from clinical trials that lowering triglyceride would be uh, associated with a reduced risk uh, of stroke. So, um, uh, all these data uh, are available in the literature, but we don't know whether uh, combining these approaches reduce the risk of stroke further. And that was the purpose uh, of this uh, new analysis. And in this new analysis, we found first that lowering LDL cholesterol um, reduced the risk of stroke and myocardial infarction and to found this, we looked at uh, the median percent reduction in LDL cholesterol at one month compared to baseline. And uh, uh, when the uh, reduction above the median uh, was followed by a greater reduction in stroke and major cardiovascular events than reduction in LDL cholesterol below the median. But Beyond LDL cholesterol reduction, it was interesting to see the other uh, factors and on treatment. And we found that uh, 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 having a, a high uh, levels of good cholesterol, that is HDL cholesterol, is still protective uh, of stroke at very low level of LDL cholesterol, meaning that there is an additional benefit and opening a door for um, uh, raising HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol, with uh, HDL raising agents like niacin or new uh, CTP inhibitors, uh, which are in development right now. 
and very promising. So uh, we think that uh, with these results, uh, we can uh, have an, a new hypothesis that uh, increasing uh, HDL cholesterol may lower the residual risk of stroke we have after uh, the Sparkle trial. And then we looked at uh, uh, systolic blood pressure uh, in patients with uh, LDL cholesterol above and below the median uh, percent reduction from baseline. And we found that, uh, uh, again, at low level of LDL cholesterol, reducing uh, blood pressure reduced the risk of stroke further. So there is a cumulative effect of reducing LDL and uh, blood pressure. And finally, we looked at uh, uh, triglyceride and we found trends for similar uh, results. And we terminated the analysis by looking at uh, four parameters according to guidelines, which are targets developed from uh, NCEP3, for example, LDL cholesterol less than 70 milligram per deciliter uh, in patients at high risk. Second, uh, HDL cholesterol above 50 milligram per deciliter. Third, uh, triglyceride less than 150 milligram per deciliter. And fourth, uh, the GNC7 uh, optimal control of uh, blood pressure, which is less than 120 over 80 millimeter mercury. And we looked at uh, uh, one, two, or th three, or four of these targets achieved. And we found a dose-response relationship with the patients achieving the four parameters having a 65% reduction in stroke risk and a 75% reduction in co major cardiovascular events. So these results are very important because it is a message of hope for patients. Uh, we can now tell them that uh, uh, if they are adherent to the treatment and follow the target uh, recommendation uh, we've made to them, they may reduce the risk of stroke by 65% and the risk of major cardiovascular events by 75%. It's like the polypill concept. And the message for, uh, for the doctors is that they have to implement now all these uh, guideline recommendations uh, and develop uh, strategies to improve adherence. Uh, for example, prevention clinic with nurse practitioners monitoring the patients during one year, uh, making sure that they are following uh, the recommendations they achieve the target recommendation, and with this, uh, we can reduce the risk of major cardiovascular events by 75%. So the take-home message is really treat patient to target. Uh, 